What's up, guys? How you doing? Welcome to another live episode of Real Hazardness. Let me get us all tweaked in. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty good, right? Can everyone hear me? If you can't hear me, uh, let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be a pretty uh, silly show, huh? So, uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight. We got some good information, you know, for the... For the weekend for you guys who are excited about fishing um <clears throat> you know uh, we had the uh um the voters lost at sea uh lately so uh keep them guys in your prayers um if you go out fishing this weekend keep an eye out i mean we you never know what's going on if you're in the northeast florida area or carolinas anywhere up the coast you know just uh keep an eye out for them um Keep praying for them and their families, and uh, hopefully, um, hopefully, someone will find something soon. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, today we got some good information. Um, talk about some other Q and A. If you guys got questions, feel free to shout it out below. If you guys uh, want to hear any jokes, or want to tell any jokes, or want to send me a joke to tell on the air, as long as it's good and clean, we'll give it a try. Um, but anyways, to start with, uh, Jacksonville, right? Uh, Northeast Florida in terms of what's biting. So, um, when we were gone from the, I guess sometime when we were in the Keys, when we got back, we were hitting the shrimping hard. Shrimping's doing well. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, let's see. So, shrimp was doing well, but the kingfish slowed out. They kind of disappeared inshore for a while. The good news is they are back now, and they have been very hot you know the bite has just been on fire uh one guy told me they caught 30 kings in one morning i mean it's been an insane bite i mean we've had a great season as it is and now it's like they've just kicked it up a notch you know um how's it going brian thanks for uh tuning in also uh, hey uh sorry, i'm sorry if i say this wrong big duder <laughs> Yeah, um, we'll definitely be keeping them guys in mind. Um, <clears throat> how's it going, Jose? Um, so I didn't catch that moon is out in the daytime. Um, I don't know if I might have an autocorrect issue. Um, <clears throat> oh, moon. Sorry. Moon is out in the daytime. Um, you know, it's funny. I, moon, moon phases, I don't know. I can never figure them out. I've heard... Uh, when they're straight up or when they're straight across, fish feed. Anytime in between, they don't. I don't know if you, what you guys experience, if that seems to hold for you. Heard all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I've heard, like, if the cows are lying down in the pasture, then the deers aren't moving. Um, so, I don't know. I've come home from not killing something, the cows have been up. I've come home, they've been down. And I don't know if it's just because by the time I got to where the cows are, which is like 30 minutes away, if they yeah. stood up or sat down, maybe I just missed them. Figures. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm trying to read the comments. It's kind of hard. Uh... When somebody's in the way. What's that? When somebody's in the way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> I stay home when that happens. Years of commercial fishing. Okay, so if the moon, you're saying if the moon is up, then they're not feeding well. Um, is that right? Let me know. <laughs> Hopefully I'll learn something today too and uh, get better at it. Part of it just becomes, um, you know, when I can fish, I go fish. And uh, sometimes they're biting good, sometimes they're not. But um, if you're a uh, Kind of like me, you work during the day, it's kind of like when you can fish, you go fish and hope for the best. Some days you gotta be choosy, but normally not. <clears throat> well, thank you, Brandon. Not a Jaguars fan, I see. <clears throat> so, yeah, so in our area, kingfish biting really well. Um, bait hasn't been too much of an issue. I think I heard bait being caught at the sound. I should get some reports tomorrow so I can update you guys on, on the comments section. Um, you know, we'll go from there. Uh, all around, you know, seems like um, we've been pretty good around Florida. Haven't heard of uh, 
any bad fishing in one area. We haven't had too many bad weather. I had some friends go down to the Keys for regular season. I know it um, seems like there's a big push at the first week or two of August, and then like some crowds go like that first couple weeks of September. The guys I talked to in August in regular season kind of told me the same thing that we noticed. Um, and that's, uh, it was a little harder this year. There were a lot more shorts. Um, so it was a little more difficult, but it wasn't bad. I mean, people still did well in lobster. And if the lobster are, you know, um, just slow to come out of the sanctuary, then, you know, you September guys could just stroke them. It could be really good. So, uh, that's what I got so far. Now, if you guys got some reports, feel free to uh, let us know. Uh, good question, Mark. How deep are the kings? Um, so, uh, Dad, you, you talk to some people. You want to jump in here? Oh. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I've been catching them in the uh, 10 to 15 mile range, and they were doing real well. Um, like you said, uh, I talked to one guy. He had 30 in the morning short bite, and he mm -hmm. said that uh, started out probably in 40 to 50 foot water and went on out in 60, 70. And he had about even success on either side. <clears throat> yeah. That sounds good. Uh, some some along the beach, too, right? They caught some on the beach. I've been seeing a lot of them skying out there. So when you're out there, kind of keep an eye on them. When we, what we'll do is we'll get a bunch of pogies more than what we need. When we get out to a spot, we'll throw those pogies out there. I guess kingfish fired up. Then you start seeing them sky, you know right where to go to get them. Yeah. One time we were um, fishing, and this was like probably... <clears throat> See, this is probably the best kingfish bite I'd seen. It was right after like a tropical storm or hurricane, and there was big swells and bait was super hard to find. We caught like maybe two dozen, and we get out to along the beach in the southeast hole, and the fish started just once they start biting, it was crazy. I was actually, you know, we'd gone through we were catching fish, hitting strikes, fish were skying. There was one point my dad was in the tower of our boat, and um, I was leaning against the side of the boat, and I was tying a rig on. I was just looking down, wasn't paying attention. All of a sudden, I hear everyone yelling. And I'm just thinking, oh, I wonder, wonder what's going on. All of a sudden, I hear a thud splash, like right in front of me in the water. Like, what is that? Apparently, a kingfish had skied right at the boat and hit the side of the boat just below me, thankfully, <laughs> and splashed right in the water. So I almost got hit by a uh, flying missile kingfish. Which... Which brings up the point in your in your wash back about 10, 12, 15 feet behind the boat. Mm -hmm. Keep that bait, especially in that shallow water. They seem to like to come up in there. There ain't nothing sweeter than to watch one. And they've almost landed in the boat when they come in and got the bait, just come up from behind it. Yeah. So always keep that boat, that bait in the splash. And then the cobia too, when they come up, they'll tend to follow your boat a little, right, a little <laughs> bit and get those short lines. And I think the good thing too is when you start throwing some pogies out or whatever live bait you have, they'll swim with the boat. I think that's, I don't know, maybe that's one reason why your prop bait does so well. You've got uh, your own natural dredge, and then you've got that weak one just behind the boat, swimming around kind of erratically due to the fluctuation in the prop wash. Right. And don't forget to do that drop back. One hits and he misses, man, throw that reel in the free spool and drop it back. you got to do it pretty quick. And uh, just wait, keep feeding it, feeding it, and you'll fill and pick up when you do lock that bait down. <laughs> I uh, see Chris's comment, the Manta Dredge. Have you seen that, our, uh, our Manta Ray teaser? We actually have a, a Dredge live bait teaser video, and we have our Manta Ray giant teaser. Yeah, we made our own. Yeah. Um, still trying to get that bad boy dialed in, but it's a big Manta Ray, for right. sure. It's a work in progress. <laughs> I mean, I'm not convinced that it won't work yet. It just hadn't worked that day. Yeah, yeah, but then nothing else worked that day either, so, yeah. so it wasn't like it was that. I think what, what I'd like to see is out there when we're um, fishing for mahi mm -hmm. and pull that out there and see if that mahi come up under. Yeah. Run a bait right back up under the back edge of that or something, you know. Yeah, and I've heard of um, like flaps. People take the flaps to make like tuna teasers, you know, different kinds of dredges. I like the bowling pin. You can get dolphin colored bowling pin. Yeah, you can get real creative yeah yeah you know. hey try anything <laughs> you know we've tried a lot of stuff too right some more some <laughs> good. 
the dredge, live bait dredge was hard just because it didn't want to stay straight. It would get tangled and then the baits would get all tangled. But even though they got all tangled, them being like a bunch hooked there right by your boat, when you threw more baits in, they all swam right with the dredge. So that was still cool. So Yeah, back in the old days, what I used to do is what I call a six pogey rig. I'd rig six pogies up on one line and run it back there. And let me tell you something. He's going to get caught. If he hits that, there will be, there's what, seven, eight uh, treble hooks back there. And when he hits it, he's going to get caught. So, hey. what, favorite color, Sea Witch? What's your favorite color? Um, I like the broom color. It looks more natural. A broom. Witch. Yeah, like a witch. Yeah. Sea Witch. Broom color. Um, my favorite color, Sea Witch. I don't know, probably like a white over blue. Um, I don't know. I, I generally like the white over blue. Um, pink. Pink is pretty good. Yeah, we don't use them. In the old days, we used them a lot. Mainly to keep that um, bait from spinning. Mm -hmm. And you kind of perfected that where the bait <laughs> don't. And, and the Sea Witch did two things. It kept it from spinning and it much more weight and get your bait down there a little bit to, to fish with. Uh, so you've been watching our videos, old Clint Farmer. Clint <laughs> Farmer is a mess. He's a good guy. He, he's always welcome on our boat, but but uh, you don't leave the boat un unentertained when he's on there, do you? <laughs> he's a good fisherman. I uh, love having him out there right. catching uh, wahoo and stuff like that. So He sings and dances and all kind of stuff. He bit he bit the head off a fish for luck one time on one of our videos. Uh, yeah, it was a fish sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without the bread. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, yeah, and, uh, and like you know, we were talking about with the Kings earlier, they've been getting some cobia out there, a lot of short mm -hmm. cobia. So make sure you have your net or something that you can scoop them up with mm -hmm. and measure them. But uh, usually when you get a lot of cobia, it's a sign of cooler water. Yeah. You know, and uh, especially when you start getting, I mean, kind of everybody's starting to get them, but... Um, Unless the water is cooler down deep, I think it's up top it's been 83, 84 degrees still. Uh, let's see a question. Uh, was it? Oh, I see it. Jose, yeah, black and red, <clears throat> excuse me, or, or yellow and green works good. That'd be cool. I haven't, sorry. Yeah, Jose, how, fa how fast do you, yeah, I'm assuming you're pulling ballyhoo with those sea witches. How fast do you pull them when you're out there uh, fishing? Cause I, I don't know if it would work on pogies or not, what do you think? Well, with pogies, we use a skirt, which is basically like a sea witch. I mean, I know a sea witch is a longer with a weight and you pull for value, but, you know, we use these king busters, or they call them dusters. Yeah, dusters. Which is like Real a color mini. dusters and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like maybe this long, an inch or two, because you don't want to smother your live bait. I mean, you want your live bait to do its job. And for that, I've done well on pink, um, like a pearlescent shiny yeah yeah i guess i think it gives a little flash yeah when you put it in there and then the the white at the top and red on back that's also been another good kingfish um skirt that i like to use um question okay top five fish on your to catch list so what's your top five fish you know i have never caught a snook it's all the years <laughs> i've been fishing i've never caught not a big one like to get me a snook and uh, probably a marlin. That's about or the mm -hmm. yellow fin, maybe yellow fins. Yeah. Maybe Two. half a dozen black fin, blue fins. <laughs> Two more. Yellow fin, blue fin, marlin. You gotta pick a couple yeah. of Well I got okay, so my five would probably be uh, yellow fin tuna. Um Marlin would be cool. Toadfish, don't forget toadfish. <laughs> Um, yellowfin, marlin, swordfish. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. Sword, put sword is my number four. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, swordfish. Um, what else would be really something I haven't? How about a killer whale? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It's a small one, maybe 30 or 40 footer or something. Right. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, sight fishing. Like, um... Tarpon. I haven't caught a lot of tarpon. I think I've hooked a few. You've hooked a few, yeah. So tarpon. Um, and what else? How'd you like the bonefish? You like catching them? Yeah, I was thinking bonefish. I caught one of them, but I would like to catch more. I was thinking bonefish or permit for like five. Mm. And we'll show you one day uh, how to catch those bonefish. And sometimes I'll go out there if the w water's rough and you can't see. I'll just fish them like bass. Throw those uh, little jigs, jigs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Shoot, I do good on those. I get um, the tarpon. And then I'll get the uh, bonefish and 
barracuda and all kind of stuff on them. Yeah. Um, Eric, I see you got a question. Uh, make, model, and length of your boat. So the make is a uh, contender. It's a 27, which is actually 30 feet. Now they just call it the 30T or the 30ST. Ours is a 2,000 year. So um, 19 years old. Yep, yeah, 19 years old. Uh, so yeah, 30 feet overall. Contender, um, 2300s. Good, good solid boat. Had we had some growing pains. Um, they tend to have uh, t gas tank problems right around 15, 16 years old. Um, yeah, I think that's most boats. Yeah, but when they get older, just the old aluminum tanks. Yeah, so when we replaced it, we put a new one in, and we put that. Uh, What's that stuff you have in the back of your truck? Uh, like a rhino liner. Rhino liner, yeah. And, and they say it keeps it from getting that electrolysis, which is mostly how you get your holes in the boat. You get electrolysis from the salt and the, the electrical wires going off and it just makes little holes in there. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool, Jose. A slower when trolling live goggle eyes. Cool, yeah. Jose, what part of, uh, where are you fishing at, Jose? Um, we don't get many live goggle eyes unless it's a tournament. They bring yeah. them up from down south and... And, and do, yeah, do you catch your own? And if so, how do you catch them? Uh, now, we used that um, um, valley hoop this year, and that thing worked good. Yeah. A little trick to it is keeping it, when you pull it up, to pull it up high. Unless, I guess, the current's running strong, and it'll mm -hmm. keep it up. But, but yeah, I'd highly recommend those valley hoops for, if you like to fish with valley hoop. Uh, uh, see, I like it. Yeah, whale. Yeah. And sail cat, yeah. I like to catch that whale that ate Jonah. Or we don't know it's a whale. It could be a That's fish. Right. Big, or maybe it's a big wahoo. <laughs> well, it could, he didn't kill him, but I think a wahoo would have bit him in half, wouldn't you? Uh, well, uh, that one that big. Um, so let's see, um, <clears throat> swords and wahoo. That's cool. Um, Key West, awesome. So um, swords and that that'd be cool. Do you do you fish? Uh, well, I guess your commercial. You must have done some sword fishing in the Keys. Um, I've seen a lot of big fish caught there. So we've been. Trying to hopefully one day we'll get out there. We may swordfish here or down the keys or something. Yes, that was trip. Now you were saying what's the best lure for tuna at the humps? We use um that uh rattle jet's been great for us. I mean we spun yeah. some of that. And then the feathers, uh the black feathers, the uh, um what uh, black and red was one of them. Yeah, so black and purple. So there's there's the C and H rattle jet. Um and I'll put links to these so you guys can look on them. Um, and then and they're there's cheap. It's the rattle jets, real cheap, party rigs. Right. Yeah, and then there's the Boone feather, um, which is really small. It's really it's a tiny little thing. It's got a tiny little weight. It's like man, you wouldn't think something that small would you know, the fish could hardly see it. But um, what a friend of ours who lives in the Keys told us was at the humps there are a lot of these black worms or something. Uh, some kind of worm bait thingy. Yeah, and they feed on those. On the, they hatch, right. I guess, there or breeding there or something. I'm not sure what it is, but whatever the case, that's why I guess our small black and purple, black and red rattle jet or those even smaller boon lures um, are that effective. Yeah, it's, and something else too is run your baits out pretty far behind you. But when we got into them this past time, we were getting them even shorter. But when I was up in the tower watching, I could see the, the baits, and a lot of times when, when I get grass on them, I'd pull it and kind of shake that grass off. When I let that bat back, as soon as I let it back, they would pop it. Mm -hmm. um, question from Wayne. Have we ever fished for amberjack and where? Not on purpose. <laughs> no, we get up in northeast Florida, we got some amberjacks, and what, we had four on one time, we come yeah. over the wreck, and man, that's a bruiser. Um, off of Jacksonville, just about any wreck almost holds the amberjack, especially mm -hmm. artificial ones like uh, sunken tugs and yeah. boats like that. Seem like up here, MG Tug and uh, MF Culverts, um, we've got a lot of amberjack there. I, I've got some dive videos. I'll put a link for one of those. There's one that we just look up, and there's just amberjack just circling us like crazy. And amberjack are just uh, such powerful fish, and they're so stubborn. You know, uh, I, we hate to get them on kingfish tackle because it takes you forever to get them in, you know, on that light line. It does. But you take those pogies and get over those wrecks like that and throw about two dozen out there, and it'll bring them amberjacks up. And boy, when they start hitting, man, you just start flipping them over to spin them rod right and hold on. Uh, okay, cool, Jose. I uh, see uh, you catch them under the deep buoys. Like, uh, how deep are those? Are those, like, submerged deep underwater? Or just, you mean, like, buoys out in the deeper water? And I uh, see so using electric reels. 
Um, I've seen one video, a guy caught one recently, a 750 pound, and they caught him on electric. It took him 10 hours or something still. I couldn't imagine on stand up tackle, just manually hanging out. talking about the uh, swordfish? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a square grouper. Um, have you ever heard of one? I don't know. We haven't even heard of a square. I mean, here we don't have very many grouper at all. I mean, you get a few of them up there, but mm -hmm. if they need if they need a fishery protected, it'd be grouper would be my guess up here. Yeah. Uh, Google it. Uh, yeah, we, we're gonna look up what a square grouper is. Yeah. I like to think he's like totally square, or maybe he's like you mean square isn't like a loser grouper. Yeah. <laughs> Was the loser? Maybe it's a grouper. freezer grouper. Maybe yeah. kind of about the fish towards already in. In the box or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bale of pot floating. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> no, now, um, I don't even know if we've ever seen a bale of pot in there, have we? No. I guess we never got there before us got it and we didn't get to see it anymore. It's yeah, that, that, now that you mentioned it, uh, yeah, I have heard it called a square gr uh, grouper. Um, yeah, I didn't even think about that, but yeah. I was thinking like tile fish and <laughs> like tile like square. Right. Is yeah. That? I'd like to do that tile fishing one day, <laughs> deep dropping, because they're in what, 700, 700, or 800 to 1200 foot or something? Mm -hmm. That's a long way to pull a fish yeah. out. Uh, I see a comment from Brandon. Uh, was it Cousin Drew or Uncle Drew from last week? <laughs> uh, yeah, Cousin Drew, although I forgot about the motion picture called Uncle Drew. Uh, and yes, he has a baseball card on eBay. He was a semi pro baseball player, kind of like where a semi pro. Uh -huh fishing team. So uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, this is a favor to me, uh, it'd make him feel really special. If you guys could just click on that card, raise the price up, <laughs> take one for the team, you know, just be pretty funny to say, hey Drew, I increased the value of your baseball cards. There you go. It's his investment, his retirement right there. Hey Chris, I guess Chris J, you said um, that you had the square bells. What'd you guys do with them? If you can tell me on there. <laughs> I mean, do you the right a, thing. Do you have a new boat now? Is what I'm trying to get at. Do you have new fishing equipment? I'm just kind of wondering. Did it turn into an economic boom for you, or or did you call call the Coast Guard? Or, I mean, you don't really have to answer it if you don't want to. Yeah. Golden Tile is a thousand feet between Marquesas and Tortugas. Uh -huh. now, now I don't know if our recorder would pick any bottom on that deep, would it? I don't know what yeah. you would look for. I don't know if it would. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, that's got to be, how do you hit that? I mean, I don't know, I guess, I guess, it's, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, hitting bottom spots here, and you think of current, wind, you know, the time it takes your bait to hit the bottom. And get back up with a fish on it, too. Yeah, I mean, dude, you have to, uh, have to <laughs> tell me how, uh, how you catch those, uh, fish in a thousand feet of water. <laughs> it wasn't worth it because it kind of wet. <laughs> Captain probably went back there and found it later on and dried that baby out. Probably mm -hmm. why. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Went back there for some odd reason. <laughs> hey, we were we're down in the Keys and we were uh, staying at this one um, um, place right on the beach, and I won't say what it was, but the lady that ran it, son, would go out in the afternoon. And I'll be gone for about an hour and only have two poles on the boat. And I kind of wondered uh, what they were actually catching out there. I never seen them come back with any fish, but they used to come in and go out and back in and boom they were gone mm -hmm. okay uh back to fishing yeah <laughs> jose a uh, four kilowatt ferino wow that's cool uh and then spinning bat here thanks for joining us man uh purple and black are the colors for the key this year yeah and that that was uh pretty much what we were doing as well um if y'all seen it i don't know if y'all seen our recent video we got a fish with florida fishing couple south florida fishing channel and we show you some of the lures there and that, that's on the lures that we're talking about tonight um, that did real well for us. And Robert, on the on the Pompano, we generally get them like we do when we get the, um, what's the other one we get out there in the shallow water? Um, um, yeah, but it's usually in the cooler cooler months when we get them. Uh, what is that? What do you like to fry a hole? Oh, whiting. Whiting. <laughs> Why, we get the uh, Pompano and the whiting about the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally when that water's yeah, cooler probably in the upper 60s, maybe 70. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We do better on those. And we get a lot of whiting here, too. Um, question from Chris. Do I like, or do we like, the uh, Yozuri Yo Yo Benita? He does. I don't. I mean, it's, it's mixed. I mean, we've gotten hits on it. Wahoo hits on it. And uh, we haven't, I don't think we caught a fish on it yet. 
You caught that one in the head in the tournament. Wasn't that a, a Yozuri? Uh, that no, was a different lip plug. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe it was a Yozuri, but it wasn't a Yozuri yeah. Benita. Um, so, like, it's kind of mixed because um, it gets it gets hits, but I've heard they've had a terrible hookup ratio, which has been my experience. And that's still a value to me. Like, if I'm getting a hit, I know there's a Wahoo there. You know, if I didn't get a hit, I'd probably keep on going. And, you know, maybe the school fired up an hour later and I missed it. You know, if I get a hit, I would work the area harder. So... We always look for those those bait areas. Even if we don't get them early, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Especially bottom fish them. Uh, spinning value. Any reports on the pogies? Pogies, uh, they were getting them from the sea turtle all the way down to the red tops, according to one of the captains I talked to this week. Uh, the bigger ones were down farther south. Um, um, and are there smoker kings around? He had, I think he said he had a couple in the 30s. So that was good good kings. Yeah. And... Um, He's, I think he said they caught 30 something and, and released, you know, got catch and release. I don't know how many actually kept, but uh, several of the boats that was fishing with them were catching them pretty good too. Um, see, so one thing about the Yozuri uh, Bonita, um, Mag Bay lures, um, they sent me some lures to test, and one of the ones that they just came out with they didn't have at the time, it's a new, it looks like a Yozuri Bonita, but you control it, they set it up to like 20 miles an hour. And it's got a magnet on the belly that the hook attaches to. So that the hook is kind of fixed like this. Whereas the Yozuri Benini, you know, those hooks are just Dang flipping them. around and they spin. Well, this is hooked. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, on the belly, and I think that will give it a better hookup ratio. I haven't tried it, but you might want to check it out. It might be worth trying, you know, maybe one of that and one Yozuri. Um, see how it goes. Yeah, on those rattle jets, we do generally use them out of the box. A mm -hmm. um, couple, uh, one we got this year, I was hooking it up and the thing came apart. So we re rigged that. We use the same line or we put it? Um, 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 I've always used the same line, but this time I did rig some up with some 80 pound fluorocarbon just to see if that helped. But traditionally, it's just been, uh, I think the, the ones I've got came with 100 pound mono. So Theoretically, 80 pound flow, hard to see. Maybe we'll get some more strikes. We'll see. What's your dad's? What's PB? Your personal best. That's uh, oh, 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 oh. the younger generation. Oh, I've had several over 10. <laughs> I had one, this is no lie, the biggest find I've ever seen in my life. Um, had a good spot. And and he came up. He was like that. I you yeah, can't see it on that. I had to take two pictures. Hand, you two, hold the other hand. Yeah, I had to take two pictures <laughs> to get him in a, in a camera. He was so big. But no, uh, um, he was huge. And um, I fought him and fought him and fought him. And I didn't, I tried to net him, but he was so big he wouldn't fit in the net. Um, I'm guessing 15, 18 pounds. The people that were working close to where I was fishing <laughs> come out there and was like, man, look at the size of that flounder. And so what I tried to do is I just set, I was by myself, I set the rod in the rod holder. I just tried to flip him in a boat and I didn't. And when I, I when I missed him, he made a run and popped the line. Yeah. But uh, we've got some uh, some good flounder. You you had one in the uh, Florida Sportsman that was real nice. Yeah, too. when I was a kid, I think that was an uh, eight-ish. I mean, we measure, I don't remember exactly, it was eight something. So that was mine. Yeah, good solid flounder. When you get in big ones, when you set the hook, you know it. <laughs> I mean, you can really tell this it's a good one. Uh, thanks, Brandon. Appreciate the comment about last week's video. Um, it was a lot of fun fishing with family. We're going to be doing some more fishing with them, probably in Alabama, Gulf, and in the uh, Mississippi River soon. Of course, I say soon. Might be uh, next summer. So stay tuned. It'll be worth the wait. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah, I see. Uh, belly hook always wraps itself. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great uh, lure. Um, I'll, I'll, wanna, I'll probably get one to try maybe for Wahoo season. Yeah, now, now what, on the recommended speed for trolling, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, it depends on what we're trolling for and what we're using. Live bait, we troll slower. <laughs> and then obviously, you know, the uh, for the Oahu, we'll get up at what, 15, 18 miles mm -hmm. an hour sometimes. Um, uh, William asked, how do you, uh, he asked, how do you target flounder? All right, now, starting now all the way into about November is the perfect time for flounder. I like to catch them on the, if, if you find your nice uh, shell bed or something in, in the backside sandy where the water's flowing towards that side, I like to fish the backside of that. Sometimes I'll actually get on there and throw over the shells and mm -hmm. work it and get a hit before they ever even get to the shells. 
uh, you got to be careful because sometimes they run and catch you off. Um, but uh, any kind of structure, uh, docks, uh, bulkheads mm -hmm. work good, um, turns in the river, um, good holes, uh, you know, yeah. where you're coming off a flat down into a deep fishing at the edge. And um, he did a, we did a video a couple months ago actually about how he does some of his finer fishing. Um, he explains a lot of it. I'll put a link in this video if you want to check it out. Um, he goes a lot over his strategy and some and some quick tips, you know, to help you catch more fish. Right. And, yeah. And and uh, the baits. Um, I like croakers the best. Mm -hmm. I like mullet. I like pogies. Just about any small fish will work. Mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, croakers are my best. Uh, FHC sportsman asked, "Ever lobster around Bay of Hondia? Bah Bay of Honda. Bay of Honda. Bay of Honda. That's I a say that, Bahia Honda." Yeah. That's a state park just a little south of where we're at. Right, yeah. It's not too far from us. Um, but we haven't, I mean, I haven't, I don't know if you did it earlier uh, when we were younger. We uh, we always went more north, uh, northern part of Marathon. Yeah, um, Duck Key, um, um, Long, Long Key, Key Bridge, Seven Mile Bridge. Uh, out in the Gulf of, from Yeah, we Duck try not to say the Gulf word, the G word. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the Gulf can be a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Or out in the Atlantic. Um, but no, I'm afraid that... Uh, haven't done much in Behandia. Um <laughs> I haven't done much Behandia. in the place you requested. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, the only thing I can suggest is um, just kind of troll around and look. You know, if you can go up north, I can suggest some spots. Um, but, uh, sorry, I don't mind helping you out. I'm not afraid, uh, you know, secret spots or anything. Just don't have much information for you. <clears throat> okay, so I uh, did a Keys trip in June and August for a uh, lobster. Hopefully just August for the lobster. Probably meant July. Yeah, uh, July, uh, okay. July and August, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, fishing seems to be way better later. Uh, have we experienced this? Bigger mahi, more tuna. Um, so we fished in the winter for uh, dolphin and tuna, and... Um, I can't say, I mean, size-wise, I didn't notice a big difference. We were catching tuna closer in shore. Yeah, they came in closer to the edge to mm -hmm. drop, you know, about that 120 to, what, 250 range right there, which is real close to shore. Mm -hmm. But uh, in May, I hear that as, like, the slam dunk time to go for dolphin, and they're big then, too. Same thing up here in northeast Florida. It's a great time to catch a big dolphin. Robert, uh, you said yours is 19. I'm assuming that's a flounder. When you're out there... 19 is a good fish, but mm -hmm. let me tell you a trick. When you're out there flounder fishing, get you another rod and just set it out to the side with a big bait, and you'll be surprised. You can just leave it out there, and when you get, you may not eat, see the hit, then flounder sneak up there and eat it. And you go to lift up, and you're like, man, I'm hung, hung, hung. You start moving, you feel that move, that him run. Make sure you set that hook, because them big ones, they'll just sit there and chew on it. Yeah, we actually, uh, we just got a uh, troll fish camera. Um, they uh, sponsored us a camera, so we're doing some underwater video. So I'm hoping pretty soon we can, sh sorry, troll fish, go fish camera that you can troll. And um, we're going to try to get you some cool underwater shots of the flounder. And we got some other fish too. Pretty excited. Hey, yeah, talking about the mullet run, um, funny you should ask that. I got a good friend and he fishes the beach a lot. He just sent me a picture Tuesday, I believe it was, where he caught, I think he said 30 something mullet in one cast. So, yeah, they're starting to run. And you can get out there now as they're leaving the uh, river, going out in the ocean. They'll be in sometimes some schools where they're, like, going in circles. And there'll be hundreds of them. You can throw you one of those, uh, and if you get, like, a one-inch mesh net or something, throw it in there. Just let it sink in there. Man, you can just load up on the mullet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mag Bay Lure. I didn't realize it was 90. <laughs> 80 bucks, 90 bucks. Well, you can't miss That's, it. It's good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if you break a fish off, man, you'd be sick crying <laughs> exactly um what do you think about using lobster as bait for kubera snapper i've seen that before yeah um, we we talked about doing it yeah but now there's some there's a lobster called a spanish lobster i don't know if you guys have ever seen it or not mm -hmm. you mainly catch them at night mm -hmm. i wonder if that would be because i hate to use a good yeah. legal lobster for because yeah you gotta have a legal lobster and um you know you can only still you limit six per person so for bait you know you have to have that license lobster license and if there's a, you know two of you, you can only have twelve lobster, which I want to think you'd go through a lot of lobster baits because you're either gonna get a big fish or you're not. Um, but I seen it at a fish show a long time ago, and they were killing the cubera on it. And um, we caught a grouper in the Keys uh, a few years ago, and you know we we uh, 
check the stomach for what they're eating. And this one had a baby lobster in his stomach, so. Yeah, and a ma, he had a turtle in his stomach, too. Yeah. Literally a turtle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do I ever throw soft plastics? I do, especially when I get them in there. Uh, um, about the end of August, September, when they really start stacking up, and I get in there catching them, I usually have plenty of live bait, but then I'll start playing with the plastics and all, and you catch them on anything once they get set up in there. And just throw that there, let it hit the bottom, and just jig it along. Um, just about any of your, um, like a jerk bait, or um, uh, what's the, um, what's got a little scent on it? Uh, gulp. Yeah the, yeah, the gulps are good baits, too. How does Cubera taste? Never tasted one. So. <laughs> no. Haven't, haven't caught a, a, at least not a keeper Cubera before. Um, <clears throat> big uh, big Cubera and snappers, but a lot of sharks, yeah. Hey, uh, um, how, how deep are you seeing those Cuberas uh, when you see them down there in Bay Honda? I'm just curious how deep they usually get them. Um, <clears throat> Can you explain slack tide? Got into a few arguments about what lost during seven miles. It ain't hard to explain. <laughs> you get in there and that tide's running and you'll know. You turn your so, face sideways and blast your mouth. Right. It's, called, it's not slack. Uh, a couple ways to tell. One, uh, slack tide, the water's not moving. So if you get in the water and you look straight down, the ground shouldn't be moving. Uh, if you're GPS, if you put in neutral and your boat says zero, it's slack. Um, See that grass folded down where it's running? Yeah, I think you have approximately 30 minutes uh, when it's slack. That's like the tidal yeah. period. It seems like it's longer slack when it gets low, a uh, high stopping, but low it seems like it, it turns a lot quicker for some reason. I don't know. And um, the, uh, you, you still got about 30 minutes either side of that, maybe a little longer of mm -hmm. the slack tide. So you, you could probably get almost two <laughs> hours out of it. That's oh, all I think. I guess we probably misread your question. Uh, when looking at tidal charts, how do you read slack? So, uh, okay. Um, so it's at the, okay, so you got up, down, up, down. The slack is the very top and the very bottom because it gets all the way high and then just kind of, you know, stops for a second. And then when it moves out, that's it going low. Um, and then when it's all the way down, that means it's slack. Uh, hopefully that's what you were, you were asking. <laughs> there you go. Um, 70 to 120 foot rakes and hills. Oh, Very cool. good. Are you using a slip sinker, uh, Jose, or are you using a, um, a teardrop? Uh, Sam beat punch slides. Um, yeah, so uh, you can um, trailer to, uh, I think there's some ramps in Hawks K, or you could trailer to the ramp by Key Colony. Yeah, it's right there by the fish, the island uh, fish company. Right. Um, is that 58 mile marker? Yeah, right where, where you turn in to go in the Key Colony Beach, that um, uh, Sandusky mm -hmm. uh, Causeway, it's on the uh, Gulf side of that. It's actually a decent ramp. Yeah. I mean, we got a 30 foot boat. You, if you look at it, you think you can't back it in there, but it's not hard. We, we do them. And I've seen mm -hmm. bigger boats in there. Um, and yeah, in that case, I would just drive north and you can hit any of those bridges along the way. Um, you can troll around. Uh, couple hundred yards off of either side of the bridge, the Gulf, Atlantic, it's working. If you got tanks on slack tide, you can dive the bridge. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of good structure in that area. Right, just from the um, water running through, cutting it up. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it sounds kind of vague, but really it's that, you know, in many season, you just see boats all over that zone. So I'm sure there's spots just left and right. Yeah, um, Spinning Valley, the one, there's one behind the ramp at the airport, and there's also one at the 33rd Street uh, Marina right down there by the Coast Guard right. Station in uh, Marathon. Um, ramp. Well, cool. That was a flurry of questions. <laughs> Hope we uh, answered everything you guys were uh, asking. Um, <clears throat> so we'll... Uh, you know, we talked about a lot today. We're going to put uh, links. We referenced some videos. I think we'll help you guys out with your questions. Um, and we referenced some products, stuff like that. We got a video coming out tomorrow. It's about shrimping. Haven't done one of those videos in a few years. So we're excited to show you. We got a cool catch and cook. You're going to see me cook. Guys cooking. So uh, that'll be a that show. That is going to be a, tri a trip. Make sure you tune in for that one. <laughs> you saw my dad cooking. You, gotta, you should watch that. Watch me cooking. Um, if you guys have girlfriends, wives, mom, sister, tell them to watch me cooking because it's probably going to be funny. They're probably going to be like, he's doing it all wrong. 
Um, and that's okay. It's probably true. Right. And and li and I'm glad uh, spending about hundred talks about the environment. Yeah, guys, keep those guys in your prayers. And uh, when you go out there, guys, let people know where you're going. Uh, make sure that your uh, safety equipment's up. If you get in trouble, don't wait till it's too late. You start seeing stuff starting to unravel, and get on that radio and go ahead and let people know that you're you're starting to have some issues. Yeah. If you got an EPIR, uh, if if you end up away from the boat, carry that EPIR with you. Mm -hmm. It can help them get to you a lot quicker. And uh, we always keep a dry bag. At least I think you keep the EPIR in the dry bag. Um, mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt to even throw four or five waters in a dry bag. And that dry bag will help you float too. If for some reason you use it. You know, can't get your life jacket, which you shouldn't have that problem. Um, just hold on to that the dry bag, keep your heavy for there, and you can get you some waters just in case. Yeah, and um, just a quick uh, shout. <laughs> Scary Jeremy's cooking, that's right. Um, if you guys want to like see uh, some more cooking, like my sister has a lot of good cooking seafood recipes. Um, if you guys want to see that, standalone cooking episodes, you know, uh, leave me a comment or something. Uh, just shout out on videos or Instagram or something. And we can definitely share those videos with y'all, you know, if, if you'd like to see them, find them helpful. Or I uh, just want to see us goofing around right. in the kitchen. And, and Kayla's a very good cook. I mean, she can cook just about anything. So <laughs> I'm going to have cooking with Kayla here one day. <laughs> see, we're going to see, 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 KK. Okay. Can we do something else with KK or something? something? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm making it up, I guess. So. Um, well, anyways, guys, uh, yeah, be safe. Uh, E-perb, everything handy. Let your family know where you're going. Uh, you know, let Stay with boats, the boat. You if you, as long as your boat's floating, stay with it. Because um, it's just a bigger target and mm -hmm. for, easier for people to see. Um, uh, some, a lot of boats will float nowadays, but um, obviously if it's a sinking, you got to get away from it. Uh, things will pop up off the boat when it does sink. Just grab it. Jurassic vids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that, that was fun to make. Yeah. I, th I think what we, was another funny. Uh, we just talked we did about uh, uh, Jurassic. We talked about doing a sequel to Jurassic. Uh, Jurassic. Jurassic Park. Jurassic. And um, Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Uh huh. Uh, a couple of those. We can do Spider Man. We got some big spiders out there. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? We could use real spiders and they could like bite us and we would turn into <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, guys. Um, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the live Q&A. Feel free to ask questions, leave comments below. Let us know uh, what we can do to help you out and uh, share some videos. Don't forget tomorrow's video, Shrimpin'. We'd appreciate it if you guys would share it, you know, on your Facebook page or social media. Uh, we definitely appreciate sharing the videos and, um, you yeah, know, just get more feedback and uh, hopefully more people to enjoy them. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on tomorrow's video. See ya. Good fishing and tight lines.